and, and now to discuss the kind of processes that have go, gone on, and we'll go to the uh, what we generally call uh, Simonson's uh, ideas about four basic processes. And when we think about this particular uh, soil profile, of course, there's been uh, well the four basic processes are additions, removals, transformations, and translocations. In this particular case, of course, there's been the addition of organic matter, but probably because uh, we have had a forced, a forced vegetation for a, a good part of this soil's history, much of the organic matter is deposited on or very near the soil surface, uh, which is characteristic of forest. Most of the uh, organic residues the, uh, comes down as leaf litter and builds up on the soil surface. And I guess also connected to organisms, there seems to be very few organisms in this soil that are able to mix the uh, organic surface layer with the mineral soil, as we would have in at least another kind of gray luvisol soils where earthworms play a large effect, a large uh, role in, 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 the, in the evolution of the soil. So we have the addition of organic matter, uh, and of course, uh, organic matter also includes nitrogen, and nitrogen is, a, is a, a pretty important to this ecosystem because there's uh, virtually no nitrogen-containing minerals in the parent material. One thing that I noticed here is that this particular site, there's quite a few uh, Canada buffalo berry shrubs here. And Canada buffalo berry, I, I'm pretty sure, is a, a shrub that fixes nitrogen. And actually, the paleobotanists that studied these kinds of sites, uh, you know, uh, using peat bogs and so forth where they could find pollen, uh, postulate that the forest here, just after deglaciation, say about eight or 10,000 years ago, was an open fo spruce forest with, uh, with the Canada buffalo berry being a very substantial component. So some of that Canada buffalo berry may still be here. So we've got the addition of organic matter and nitrogen, the two of the main uh, uh, pro uh, processes we might call addition. In terms of removals, nearly always these glacial tills have a certain amount of salts in them, soluble salts. Well, these very quickly, I'm sure from this site, were dissolved and leached away and away to the groundwater, starting their journey towards the ocean. Uh, and so we, we can think that certainly the soluble salts have been and are continually removed from this particular soil. That takes us then to translocations. And translocation, of course, is the dominance process, you might say, in this soil. And it's the translocation of clay, uh, mostly by water, moving down through the soil, through the, through the pores in the soil, uh, carrying along with it very fine clay particles. And so these clay particles have moved mainly from the AE horizon, and not very far, but just down to accumulate in the BT horizon. And that is one of the reasons we have this quite a textural contrast between the, the, the soil of the AE horizon and, and, the, and the BT horizon. The last one that I'll just mention a, a bit of is transformations. We talked a bit about it with other soils, but certainly um, many of the minerals present in this soil have been transformed by weathering over the, over the time of its soil formation. We mentioned phosphorus the other day. Most of the phosphorus is present as apatite. Uh, it's an, a mineral that comes basically mostly from granitic rocks. And uh, we know that there's apatite minerals in this soil. But if we were to look at the kind of phosphorus now present in the, in the upper part of the soil, it would mainly be organic forms of phosphorus, uh, phosphorus in, in, organic pound, in organic compounds, and some certain amounts of phosphorus complexed with iron and aluminum. And, and even calcium to some degree. So we see transformations of phosphorus. One thing that I didn't mention when I was talking about removals, that actually the gray luvisols as a soil group are different from almost all the other soils in Saskatchewan in that there has been quite a loss of phosphorus from the soils. And it seems to me that the, the losses are greatest from the AE horizon, from the most strongly weathered horizon. And, uh, and, and phosphorus is basically uh, probably has, uh, <coughs> has leached away with, with the water moving through the soil. And we don't completely understand why this is the case, but it certainly is the case that, 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 that in contrast to our chernozemic soils, uh, the phosphorus concentration of this part of the soil seems to continually go down.